Create powerful promotions that are easy to design and hard to miss. With Vistaprint, it's easy to customize your business cards, marketing material, corporate gifts, calendars, stationery, and more with confidence or get real-time design help. Visit RadioOnFire.com slash Vistaprint to get $20 off any order of $40 or more. If you have a message to get out, you want it to be affordable, but you want it to look professional. Visit RadioOnFire.com slash Vistaprint for $20 off today. This is RadioOnFire.com. Yours truly, Dami K, in here alongside my father. How you doing, Dad? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You Happy, good? excited, and ready. You fired up? Fired up <laughs> and ready to go. And ready to go. Ready to All go. All right. Yeah, so a lot of, uh, lot of news yeah. that we want to get into. We also have a special guest in the building, special okay. guests with an S. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Um, so, but you, you had a good week? Yes, yes, yes. I, I was actually in New York. Uh, came I heard back yesterday. I yeah, heard. Yeah. How'd it go? Good, good, good. Productive. Good. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, so we are seven days out. That's right. From a very, very important midterm election. We'll get to that in a second. But yeah. pipe bomb package. Suspect, I'm gonna call him that. So this guy had like a list of like a hundred potential targets of people that he wanted to send pipe bombs in the mail to. Uh, Trump supporter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, so I guess what? So Caesar Sayak is his name. What kind of name is that? Italian. Okay, that says a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, he made his first court appearance. Uh, some suspicious, another suspicious package sent to CNN. Right. Um, so, what, what are your thoughts? What's going on here? Well, hey, man, he's the ex stripper. He used to strip. And, uh, I mean, I know a lot of dancers. <laughs> I don't know dancers that send that yeah. sending pipe bombs yeah. through yeah. the mail. They but, like pipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Well, you know. Uh, this is real serious it is it this is. is this is serious this you know this not only was this man trying to take out the democratic leadership but all the people that work at the post office just innocent just everything didn't even think people. about those people yeah i mean just riding in a, in, in, a, in a mail car blowing up this is dangerous and we got to recognize the times that we're living in right now that, that that's war that that's that's a decoration of war. Yeah. Two yeah. ex-presidents. Let, 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 let me run down some of these names. President Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, John Brennan, who's the former director of the CIA, Eric Holder, former attorney general, Maxine Waters, from California, representative there, Joe Biden, of course, former vice president, Robert De Niro, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, George Soros, Tom Steyer, just these are just some some of the people, and of course, you know, he sent to CNN, so it's you know a bunch of people that work there. And do you know how this would have been handled if we had a real president? How serious this matter would be taken? And he brushed it off like it wasn't, you know. What I mean? This is, uh, I mean, it's impossible. So it, it uh, 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 we have to realize how serious this is yeah these people are trying to kill us he's yeah. the president for white people and he's made a very claim well why why do you have that being the case and i believe that 100 percent. that being the case why do you have black people black and brown people mostly black going around showing support for donald trump when he clearly does not rock with us. Uh, you know, I, I say it every week that this man is, uh, is a professional confidence man. He's a kind man. And just like when you hear about uh, a lady sending money to somebody overseas for, uh, that she's in love with. She ain't never seen it before. The family say, why are you sending that $30,000? You sent him $40,000, Mom? You don't even know this man. 
She's under a spell. She's been hoodwinked. They've been kind. And the worst thing, the, the, I mean, it is almost impossible to convince that old woman who sent that money to that man that sent her love letters and, and, and texting her that she was kind. She won't believe it. They don't. They, they, the same thing with, with, with Donald Trump with none of these people. They don't believe it. And, and here's the thing. Not only has he conned the few black supporters that he has, but he's conned the white people too. Oh yeah, that's what I'm really talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm really talking about. The poor, about. the poor and middle class white people in this country are are the ones who've been conned the worst. Yeah, because yeah. they've been believing yeah. this foolishness from the beginning. The guy said, I mean, the, and, and to show you a real good con man, and he's good. He'll tell you everything. He already told you. I like the uneducated. He already told you. I like the uneducated. He didn't say why though. Yeah, well. Y'all like, believe anything. Yeah. He like he uh, he said that when he was running. I like the uneducated. And here's a man who already told you how he feels about women and what they do and how they feel about celebrities. I grab them right where they already know. But they but is but but you know what it is? It tickles their ear. They like it. He got he got charisma, so they like it. And so they sold on him. Yeah, yeah. So it, the um, Sayoc, the uh, pipe bomb package mail-in suspect, facing forty-eight years in prison if he's convicted of all charges. Uh, so, does any blame for this fall in Trump's lap for this this pipe bomb? Absolutely, categorically, positively. Because he is giving out all the signals. He's motivating, stimulating those people. And, uh, yeah. It, it falls directly in his lap. He's the president. He has the biggest m microphone in the country. Mm -hmm. And they believe that. And mm -hmm. see, it, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a spell. You know, uh, they, uh, they're under the, uh, under the spell. And they love it. The so man already told you he can go out and shoot people. On, on Fifth Avenue and, they, and, and, and nobody going. This is before the election. Yes. Yeah. So, and, uh, so do you equate this to a a guy that's running game on a girl from the standpoint like like almost like a pimp? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And get get her to go out in absolutely. the street and then bring the money back to you know because the mind absolutely. controlling the mind. Because and, and and that's interesting that you say that because here if you had uh, what they call pimps. Mm -hmm. He didn't get her because of his love making. It's all his conversation. It's he got in her head. Mm. And it has nothing to do with sex for him and her. It's about his conversation. And Trump has a conversation for the uneducated white people. And they scared. And he's make them think that hey, uh, these people are coming. They're getting more powerful. The black people are running for governors, the presidents. We're going we're gonna to roll this back. Mm -hmm. And he's tickling their ear. Like my grandmother used to say when she would go to church, the preacher used to tickle her ear. And he's tickling their ear. Just like Obama was tickling our ears. You know, they liked it. So we liked Obama. Uh, and then this is what I told you uh, a long time ago. It is just like the, uh, when he was running, like the Roseanne Barr show and uh, the Bill Cosby show. When the Cosby show was out in the 80s, number one show, wholesome, pure, wholesome show. What knocked off uh, the Cosby Show was Simpsons. the no the Roseanne Barr Show. Complete opposite. They were hillbillies, babies smoking cigarettes. I mean, and, and, and the same thing happened with the uh, the Obamas and um, uh, Trump. I said they're gonna let the, that wholesome, pure uh, Obama family leave off and be replaced by white trash. He is white trash, mm -hmm. and so uh, that's what no you. Do. That's, no that's doubt what, about that. That's what it is. No doubt about that. Um, so, Nat, I think that's a, a great segue to this next topic. Uh, so, last week, a man killed two people at a Kroger's. Of course, you know what Kroger's is. Kroger's, uh, for people that don't know, uh, supermarket, grocery store. After trying to enter a black church, he was unable to get in a church, so he killed these two black people in the parking lot of the Kroger's in Kentucky. And this is just minutes after he tried to enter this church. 
Did they say why he was not able to enter the church? Or what, yeah, it was what? locked. He was locked. Yeah. It was locked, as it should be. It was locked. Mm -hmm. So all the people that's supposed to be in there was probably already in there. And if it was somebody that was coming, they would have called you know, somebody's phone. So Maurice Stallard and Vicki Jones, uh, the two deceased people. Uh, Gregory A. Bush, 51 years old, arrested shortly after the shooting. Now, the question that I have, and before I get to the question, a few days after that, you have in Pittsburgh, 11 Jewish people killed in the synagogue. Uh, and so they're burying their dead today. Um, so they didn't want Trump to come there. Even the Republicans didn't want Trump to come. But, you know, he brings the, um, the wife and, and him and, and, and he goes up there. So you got protesters there protesting the fact that he's even there. Uh, as I said, shooting victims, family shunned Trump. Top officials did not join him. Uh, one lady said that words have consequences. You cannot preach hate and then be surprised when people, irrational people, take your hatred to heart and act on it. Your words, if you're the president, if you're the president of the United States, have consequences. So my question is, we've seen this before. Should places of worship now have armed guards? In, in life, you have always realize and take assessment of what time it is so uh yes 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 and uh uh you've got to protect yourself and and and, and, and we was talking before it's apparent that this president is there to look out for white people and so they could come in these cities here and in, in, in baltimore new york and start killing black folks We've got to protect ourselves. That's that, that. That's what. It, that's what. Got to know what time it is. Can't wait to say, "Oh, this, this happened to them," or "This happened to the Hispanic." You see what he? It's just like uh, uh, Germany, Nazi Germany. I mean, they got, you know, he came for them. He came, I ain't doing nothing. He came. He coming. They coming for us. So we've got to get ourselves prepared. So ain't no question about it. And your home too. So you've got to protect yourself. Now, as far as dialing things back, let's say that things go the way that many people want them to go. And this midterm election brings people in that eventually try to impeach Trump. And let's say that Mueller has some things. And let's say that Trump leaves next year, right? Mm -hmm. He's gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, can things be dialed back when you when you when you take the toothpaste out the tube you can't put it back in can things be dialed back with another president we uh, as a country have you know embarked on something that uh, uh, is here yeah. uh, for instance if say the Democrats got control of, 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 the, of the House and the Senate mm hmm it's gonna be so much chaos. Uh, let me tell you, it's be a lot of chaos. The, 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 he's gonna try to prosecute and, and and claim that all of them were illegals, voted for him. It's gonna be all kind of chaos. Yeah. Chaos. He's not gonna go down without his a fight. His people are not. Remember, I told you a long time ago. If something happened to him, his we ain't gonna have no riots like we were having. It's gonna be gunplay. It's gonna be violence. You mean like people sending bombs and? Right, people, people shooting, shooting in churches and, 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 and people and, shooting and on the side. riding down the street. It's gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be problems. So uh, that's why I'm saying we have to realize what time it is. I don't think that everybody does, though. Of course they don't. If they did, yeah. uh, of course they don't. Hey, listen, if 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 we as the people knew what time we knew what time it is, we would, we wouldn't be in the position we're in. We'd be running this country. Mm -hmm. Fifty million of us knowing what time it is. Please. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, of course we don't. But people can learn. Sometimes people need uh, um, real motivation. Mm -hmm. And 
I think that we've gotten to the point where things need to be, you need to take this as motivation to turn some things around. Uh, so last thing before we take a break, um, early voting has more than doubled Mm -hmm. Since 2014 Good good. We are over halfway through Just a couple of days left In this early voting period And The vote The numbers are through the roof Mm -hmm. Some people are excited I'm, I'm, I'm happy But I'm still optimistic Because What if The early voting numbers Are just the people who are going to vote anyway, voting early. Well, no, you're gonna you're gonna have record record turnout. You know, it's no question about that. You're gonna have record turnout. You're gonna have more people voting than voted in uh, 2014. Sure. And um, so, uh, you know, at voting. least here in Maryland, mm-hmm. more people voting helps the Democrat, mm-hmm. the Democratic candidates, mm-hmm. because you have more Democrats here. Now, you do have a lot of Democrats that are for sale. For sale. You have a lot of Democrats who, and we were speaking about, the, and I've, I've talked about this a lot. You have, you have a lot of Democrats who are not really Democrats. But, this is Maryland. And historically, you needed to be a Democrat to win. So, they've been posing as Democrats. Just to, you know, get in. I'm a Democrat, and, and so people would just vote for them. So, the, but but historically, a lot of them have been Republicans or conservatives masking as Democrats to become successful in Maryland. That's what's happened a lot. A lot of people don't talk about it. I never looked at it like that. I can say it again. I say it again. I say it again. Can, it again. can you name one? I can't. Uh, you, can I name one? Yeah, one that who you, I think is masked as one that you think that is that's a Republican and and and, and is is uh, masking as a Democrat. O'Malley. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because what I say when when I say because a lot of people don't know so and a lot of people talk a lot and they don't know. Mm-hmm. For instance. When people say stuff like, and these are Republican talking points, when they say, what have the Democrat, why should we vote Democrat? What have the Democrats done for us? Mm-hmm. You know, when, when Trump says, you know, what do you got to lose? A lot of times people will, black people I've been seeing saying these talking points that historically we've been voting for Democrats and they just think you shouldn't. Yeah, well. That I, means they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, well, you know. You, you got to give people, they, people are gullible. I mean, just, uh, you know, um, <laughs> For instance, we had a couple of weeks ago, Minister in here saying he he's going he's for uh, Larry Hogan. Hogan, a minister. Yeah. So here's the point: if Hogan is a Republican and Donald Trump is Republican, they're on the same team. Correct. That, that's his captain. Correct. He don't have. You could be on a baseball team and not like your coach, but when he said, uh, 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 "Dwayne Williams, come up the bat," Ronald Hogan, get bat. Come up the bat. He going back. That's his. That that's his team. Right. His captain. So you might you you don't have to like your captain. But when but we challenged the same when, team. We, when we challenged him on that, he said that I don't like them normally, but I like him because right. he did something for me. Right. And that's why I said it's people for the tape. Listen, man. It's people that's for sale. Yeah, well, I man. Listen, I I remember. Um, Reading, uh, no, I, I was listening to the radio. This has got to be 30 years ago. You know, you guys know, listened to the ra- on those talk shows years ago, and uh, the the guy on the talk show said that uh, I don't think that you painted the picture good enough. Slow down for a second. Mm. So I want to make sure y'all understand. He was passionate. He would be calling, like, everybody, everybody, be quiet in the house. Be quiet in the house. So he's on the phone. He's in a room. He's yelling and screaming at. The host, he's not, te- he's, what do you mean? It's, I don't know, I don't know. So he's <laughs> very passionate, very right, passionate. Right, right. That's why I can't listen to him today. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, but uh, now see, now this is going to show my age. Because I. Everybody knows you're 50. No, no, because uh, 
I don't remember the point that I was getting to <laughs> until you said that. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry. I should have messed it up. I, I, you said it goes back 30 years. So you're talking about Tom Marr or yeah. Les Ken Sullivan. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But it'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we definitely need people to get out and vote. Yeah. People are, are energized in a different way. Now, what is causing this energy? What do you, what, why Why now? Why, why now all of a sudden? Are you kidding? They can see what's happening. You know what I mean? Uh, with um, uh, this, this president. Mm-hmm. Is, is, uh, this, I don't even know whether, uh, I don't even know what to call him. You know, uh, he is uh, beyond egotistical and beyond a narcissist. This guy is, he, let me tell you. In actuality, he is that man in that van. What the uh, uh, the the pipe bomb? Guy? Yeah, uh, that that that's how neurotic he is. Mm-hmm. That he, that's how neurotic this man is, and he's the president. They elected him president of the United States. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, we's in trouble if we don't if we if we can't. Uh, either way it goes, uh, we're gonna be in trouble. If he gets out, if he if he, if he was out, if he got kicked out, I, I, as I told you before, he's got to get out before 2018 is over. Oh, we're gonna be in deep trouble. Now, why why do you say either way? Well, if he uh, if we take if the Democrats take control of the of the Senate and the and the and the House. And uh, start to get the kind of legislation they want through, and, and mm-hmm. they and, and, and they get rid of him. Say say that they got enough power that they uh, got rid of some miraculously got rid of uh, Donald Trump, and Donald then Pence becomes president. Yeah. Then, okay. Then what, okay. Then what well, happened? yeah, I ain't even dealing with Pence. Just 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 the fact that you got rid of Donald Trump, he already got 30, 40 million people who love him. Mm-hmm. Love him. This is going to be violence in this country. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be close to the civil war, and, uh, and and I don't want to. And but I don't I don't necessarily have a problem with that because I don't want people, I don't want it to be thought that conservative Trump loving people are just going to be able to walk around and smack people around. There's this this is not back in the day. You know what I mean? So no, it ain't gonna be like that. People are gonna people, people will fight back. Right. But let me tell you, those people got plenty of guns and they've been preparing for this. Mm-hmm. They've been preparing for a civil war. We haven't. They have. That's why every We've time been fighting the brothers in the street been fighting the civil war hey, all man. their life. Man. All their life. Hey, they ain't prepared for that. But it's a different kind of war. Different kind of war, though. That's just, right. That's, yeah. just, that's just like, uh, you know, we, we think that we got some gangsters out here. I told you going over to Nigeria, they ain't, these ain't no gangsters here. <laughs> no. No. I've seen, I, I've been around some gangsters. Over, you know. But let me tell you, they, these white people been training out in the field, mm-hmm. and they got plenty of ammunition, and they got the guns. Mm-hmm. All right, well. What y'all going to do? I think they're full of crap. Okay. The uh, uh, Caesar, what's his name? Say, uh, uh, Sayoc, he was in court crying. Was he? Yeah, he was in court crying. So it, yeah. it's real. They real tough on the keyboard. I talk to people online. I talk to conservative people. They real tough online. And you're yeah. real tough well, I mean, behind the scope of a they, gun a mile away. They always get somebody's they, face. They always been uh, yeah. been tough in a gang. That's yeah. why uh, yeah. you know, when they was hanging black people, it, it wasn't one. Right. It, it was, was always a, a bunch of them. of them. Yeah. On one on one, they like they they smiling. Hi, how are you? Right. You know, but um, you know, when they get behind closed doors, a funny white person. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was talking to a gentleman uh, in New York uh, the yesterday, and he from Chicago, and I I told him I remember the first time I went to Chicago, and I'm walking down Michigan Avenue, and this is in the '80s, and um, a white guy bumped my shoulders. You know, he you know hit my shoulders, and I was I'm accustomed to them moving out the way. Yeah. You know I mean, definitely. He, I mean. I said, "What kind? Of, this uh, this is a different kind of people." And he was just saying that when they do that, they they secretly calling you a nigga. 
That's what the white guy said. Yeah, no, that, no, that's what that's what the guy was telling me yesterday. Uh, he said that's how they are in Chicago. You really? know, white folks. Yeah, that's how they are, and that's what they mean uh, when they bump your shoulder. Uh, they calling you a nigga. You know, nigga. <clears throat> and uh, I, um, I first time I experienced it. I, I, I'm from Detroit in, in Baltimore. I, I, I was never experienced a white man walking down the street not moving out of the way. Right. They, here they move out of the way. Yeah, they he he bumped my shoulder hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's that's um uh that was pretty dark dad thank you yeah <laughs> all right so we're gonna we're gonna brighten things up uh we, we're gonna take a quick break and uh we're gonna come back with uh cory j johnson uh before we go there today's broadcast is brought to you in part by vistaprint Create powerful promotions that are easy to design and hard to miss. With Vistaprint, you can customize your business cards, marketing material, corporate gifts, calendars, stationery, and much more with confidence, or you can get real-time design help. Visit RadioFire.com slash Vistaprint to get $20 off any order, $40 or more. If you have a message that you're trying to get out, you want it to be affordable, but you want it to look professional, RadioOnFire.com slash Vistaprint for $20 off today. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with our guest, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Keep it 
tight back shots, hit it right and I'm gone. Tell your man, don't be jealous, cause he know this in his beat, cause. Okay, we are back here, RadioFire.com, Father and Son News Show. How you doing, Dad? All right. All Good? Right. All right. All right, so we got some special guests here. Let's go ahead and um, introduce yourselves, please. How y'all doing? I'm Corey J. Johnson. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Curtis McNeil. All right, so um, y'all have something that the people need to know about. <laughs> Yeah, but before sure. before we before we get to that, let's 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 uh, let's dig let's let's get in y'all business a little bit. Oh my right, goodness! Right. Where where is everybody from? Originally, I'm from Lafayette and Castle Street for real. Like I grew up right there on North and Castle. You know what I mean? Um, but my mom used to send me all over. You know what I mean? And then I joined the military, so I went all over again. And then started <coughs> driving trucks when I got out. I'm all over again. So my roots is here, but. My life is everywhere, you know? Well, you know, I'm originally from Baltimore, uh, West Baltimore. What's up, B-more? Okay, okay. And um, so you are an author? Yes, sir, that's correct. How, uh, how did you get into writing? Um, well, this is my second time being on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, first of all, thank you for uh, bringing me back. Absolutely. Um, the first time I was here, I talked about my book, Courageous. So, um, Courageous is a book about my brother. Uh, I had four published books. But um, I don't know. I, I just got the, uh, the bug one day to just um, put some stories out there. Originally, the first book I wrote and published was about myself, uh, being a young black man coming from Baltimore, um, joining the Marine Corps, traveling around the world. And uh, all the different different things that I experienced, um, I thought it was an intriguing, you know, story. So um, it was more like a memoir book about myself. And uh, while I was doing that, um, I just had an idea to write this book, uh, courageous about my brother, because his life was, <laughs> to me, way more uh, exciting than my life. So. And so now we're going to get to see this on the stage. Correct. Yeah, it was always my vision to um, turn courageous into. Um, another platform as far as the book, take it from the book form to uh, the stage and then hopefully to the big screen or, or television or something like that. So, and, you know, one step at a time. You know, we did the book, you had me on, and uh, we talked about it, and uh, we had a great interview. And um, the book, you know, had moderate success here in Baltimore, um, trying to get the story out there. And um, I wrote the uh, script for. Uh, what I thought would be a good um, stage play. And, um, you know, we're going to see what it do. Yeah. You, you, when you say your brother, you talking about your biological brother? or the brother? No, no, no. This is my biological brother. Oh, okay. Uh, his name is Avon Johnson. Um, he was very well known in the streets of Baltimore. His street name was Flubber. Um, I'm not sure um, how, how familiar you are with West Baltimore. And, mm -hmm. and I know you are you're an older seasoned gentleman than I am, and Flubber was older than me. Right, but he right. had a, uh, a um, notorious reputation. That's what I would call it, notorious reputation mm -hmm. in the streets of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So you you keep saying was. So <laughs> well, Diamond, no, I don't like to give away too much of the story, okay. but, but he's not with us anymore. Okay, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So what's the connection? What's the connection between y'all? Wow, man! Wow. Um, he wrote the screenplay, and then um, uh, a local director, one of the famous directors here, said uh, he was looking for an actor, and, and the director said, "Look, I got the perfect guy." Why he thought I was the perfect guy, I don't know. I'm not even going to sign on to that because I know there's nobody but God, you know. Um, so they brought me in, and and and, and Corey. 
you know, CJ had me sat down and read, and I think it was like, what, two minutes, three minutes after I started reading, he was like, that's it. So y'all didn't know each other? We didn't know no. each other before oh, okay. that. But oh, yeah. as a result of that, let me tell y'all how God will work, for real. As a result of that, CJ, he was trying to, like, really break into the film, you know, and, and do some film work. So I've been doing film work since since 04, thanks to um, Dr. Hugh Carey, who discovered me back in uh, 89, 88, 89, and started me doing stage work. <clears throat> and as a result, later on down the line, you know, I started doing film work. And um, I had already had my foot in, had some of my own equipment, I own my own production company. So um, we just chopped it up off of that audition, and, and he came on board and helped me with a project. So, you know, it's like my daddy used to say, you know, one hand wash the other, both mm -hmm. hands wash the face. So, <laughs> you know, I'm helping him with his project. He done helped me with mine. And now we starting to collab mm -hmm. as writers and, and put things together so that, you know what I mean, we can we can really speak some some volume, some words of volume to, to a community uh, uh, less spoken of and mm -hmm. less spoken to. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's, that's our connection. I'm, I'm just an actor, just... Just, just, I'm blown, man. I'm mm -hmm. blown. With what, this. what character do you play? I'm playing Avon Johnson. I'm playing Flubber. Well, you the star? Yeah, it's 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 crazy. I've been in this business for so long, and this is the first time I ever get the opportunity to do a one man show. Like, oh, okay. there's nobody else on the stage but me. There's nobody else talking. There's nobody to bounce feelings off of. Um, uh, there's nobody to set a tone off of the tone is set off of me so it's a little different world for me but um, you know I, I've been trained properly and, and I've been listening which is the biggest thing I've been listening and paying attention to what other folks have done um, and some of the work that I've done in the past you know what I mean so it kind of helps me but um, I'm just I'm blown away to be able to play this guy man like you know, growing up, you hear about guys like Flubber. When I was growing up in Baltimore City on Lafayette and Castle, big up the LNC, um, we heard about guys like Flubber. Flubber kind of fell in that category with guys that was um, was movers and shakers of the city, even though it was at the street level. You know, in the street, he was a mover and a shaker. And then when you hear the uh, the stories of resilience and and and, and of compassion and, and and the love that he had for people. It kind of lets you know, like, okay, I'm in the right lane. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, man. I'm just, I'm blessed to, to, to even be called to do this. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. that's that's interesting because now that's that's doubly doubly difficult because true, you know your brother, absolutely. Okay, yeah. and so he got to become that right. that brother. Yeah, and right. uh, and he can only become that brother. Um, based on what you told him, and uh, he's right. got to uh, to live it and be it. Right. And uh, so that, right. that, that's not easy. Now right. And then you know, being a young dude, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those pipes, you know that, right? But being a young dude and hearing about um, brother Flubber, you know, Avon and, and and some other brothers hearing about nothing and um, seeing nothing and moving, and just watching their style and and just how they did certain things even though you know we weren't all doing right there was still like certain codes and, and, and mm -hmm. certain things that said okay yeah you throwing bricks at this penitentiary but you ain't gonna be disrespectful about it you ain't gonna you know what i mean you're not gonna shame um you're not gonna shame your family in the midst of what you're doing so and seeing all of that you know and hearing that i'm like i'm kind of blown but all at the same time you know i hear some of the stories that then let me know like Nah, like, like, dude was a real dude. He was a real man, a stand-up guy. So, I'm a stand-up guy. At least I try my best to be. So, it it kind that part of the pressure is kind of relieved because I, I can understand, you know, what it means to, to see somebody without know that you have, and then you try and extend yourself as best you can because you know they say, you know, are you my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. So, you know, you got that responsibility in in, in the. I don't know if y'all read the, the book or read the story, but man, like, like this dude was, mm -hmm. like I can see myself kind of lining up with him. So it, it just made it a little easier to kind of dive in because I can see myself kind of
kind of lining up with him, or I can see, you know, uh, the more mature cats that I grew up with that I watched kind of lining up with him. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that makes sense. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Corey, let me ask you a question. Why did you Why did you decide to do the um, the one man format? Um, being perfectly honest, I don't have a background in um, theater. Just like I didn't have a background in uh, literature when I wrote my book. So um, I try to take on uh, what I think I can handle. So um, in wanting to transfer the book from uh, paper, you know, paperback to screenplay or uh, script form and putting it on stage, um, I took on what I thought I could handle. So jumping out there doing my first play, I wasn't ready to handle a cast of 10, 15, 20 people. So I thought I could handle uh, one person on stage, you know, molding them into uh, Mm -hmm. the character and being able to relate the story to them as far as, um, you know, what I thought I could contribute and what I thought, you know, with my expertise I could handle. And I also have a a very um, um, great interest in uh, one person uh, plays myself. Um, I went to see Donnie uh, Hathaway piece Mm, at uh, center stage you saw that right Mm, and and the guy was phenomenal Mm. and and what i enjoy and want to want to bring to the people with with my one person piece is the intimacy you know it's one person you know you're not bouncing off anybody else you're bouncing off the audience Mm. so the way the stage is going to be set up the audience is 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 going to be like they're in the room with him right Mm -hmm. so it's like uh he's at an na meeting he's telling his life story and Mm. um the audience can interact with him. you know when he say certain things you know there's gonna be oohs and ahs and hey man and yeah i heard that you know and laughter ho- hopefully and things like that and that'll give him the energy you know what i mean mm-hmm. to, to bring forth the character but but to answer your question um it was honestly because i thought i could handle a one person mm-hmm. cast as opposed to a large cast mm-hmm. well that, that that goes back to what we were talking about before y'all came on the air knowing what time it is <laughs> you understood what time it was yeah. and to answer your question you asked me earlier i wasn't um uh raised in baltimore so okay. i so okay. that's probably why i didn't i wasn't familiar with your uh, your brother okay and uh but uh yeah it's um uh, uh knowing what time it is and and that's good because uh you are able to express i know what time it is yeah, no i like doubt. that i like yeah. hey, hey yeah. That, that, that's what, that's what it's all about speaking of time yeah what what time period is the play set in? Um, like I said, I took it straight from the book. So uh, Flubber was older than me. Um, so this is the 80s? Uh, 70s, 80s. Mm-hmm. Actually, the period in which uh, he's going to be acting is, yeah, the 80s. He passed away in 91. So this is, I believe, like 90, the way I wrote it in the script. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the early 90s. Um, uh Without giving without giving it away, just know you're coming to a meeting. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, and um, know you're going you're going to take a dive into who Flubber was behind the mask. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the 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 play. It, if we did it as a film, we might would have to do it as a period piece because of the fact that the different episodes in the film and the different scenes in the film, you wind up bouncing back and forth. You wind okay, up being so yeah, yeah. almost in present day. Because it's a lot of reflection. It's a lot mm-hmm. of reflection in the play. And it's, 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 it's a lot of reflection that kind of tell you, um, you know how you hear people say, um, oh, them kids just bad. Them kids just don't want to act right. Them kids just don't want to do right. But nobody ever, nobody ever say, well, why they don't want to act right? Why they don't want to do right? Mm-hmm. What was going on? Why didn't you know? Why didn't Lord Johnny stay in school when he was the smartest school? He was the smartest kid in school. What mm-hmm. was going on? It was more hey, to Lord the story. Lord Johnny was a little bit too smart for the program they was giving him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, you you you'll move through. Wow, like what the 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 the, the early fifties. Oh yeah, that's true. You that's know, true. your movie and reflection. The, he yeah, does go back to like his early childhood. Yeah, and yeah. then he takes you through a couple of different things. So it's different time periods. Like you said, if we did it on film, then yeah, we would have to go back. But because of the setting for this, it's an NA meeting. I thought it was, um, 
uh, appropriate to use the NA meeting from the book right. because it's an anniversary NA meeting. Mm -hmm. So in a celebrating your anniversary meeting, you know, you got to tell your story. Mm -hmm. So it fits. He's telling you from childhood and, and the things he went through, but also consider key, key, and what I'm saying is that NA. Mm -hmm. So he was a drug addict, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But he's recovering. And he's telling you his story. So his story is going to be around some of those topics. Well, you know what? Let me tell you. This is a, um, a uh, remarkable opportunity for both of you. And for you, uh, some of the greatest actors have been discovered. It was one, one, one man, one woman show. I'm not thinking about Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg Absolutely. became popular. When she did that, uh, this years ago, you don't even know about that. <laughs> uh, when she uh, did that one woman act. Absolutely. Same thing with James L. Jones. He became one man act when he played um, um, Jack Johnson. Mm. Right. One man act. Right. So, uh, but that gives you a chance to dig in, dig deep and in. bring it out. And uh, when you can entertain and uh, bring those emotions to the people in the audience, right. just you. Yeah, I, I you know that's, it's that's crazy. That's it's it. that's wow, it. hey, Bob, it's crazy you even say that because I had a rehearsal yesterday. And there was one scene in the play, and um, uh, Avon, you know, Flubber, he talked about his love for his uncle Johnny, and he threw it real quick, real fast, and real to the point. But you know, when you go there as an actor, when you go there. You know what I'm saying? Like we taught that the, the, the foundation of acting is the reality of doing. So you can't, ain't no pretend here. You gotta become. So in the midst of building that, I found myself, I don't wanna say inadvertently, but I found myself drifting to, mm -hmm. damn, how yeah. much did he really love this dude? Because yeah, yeah. the words that he say mm -hmm. tells you, nah, it was, it was a little more than just the disciplinarian. It was a little more than just my uncle, it was it was my representation of what a man is supposed to be, mm -hmm. and, and 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 how I'm supposed to conduct myself regardless to what I'm doing. There's still a, a, a decorum that has to be followed as a man. So it's 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 wild you say that because yeah, it took me there yesterday, and the director was sitting there. And he was just like, "Wow, mm -hmm. now you got it. Mm -hmm. Now you get it." And, for the first time in the rehearsals where, you know, you, you spend time trying to learn the lines, trying to learn the lines, trying to learn the lines, trying to learn the lines. Sometimes you can, you get, you, you, you don't quite get to those little small nuances that tell you, like this person, this is a real human being. You mm -hmm. know, for me, my biggest fear right now is, it's a bunch of people still here that pay homage to this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that know this guy specific not heard about this guy not mm -hmm. know of this guy but know this guy mm -hmm. so no, i want personally yeah yeah i want to do the best i can to mm -hmm. really to bring him back you know mm -hmm. i want i want to spend the evening with him right. just off of the that's stories right. that that's i right. heard you know right. what i mean right. That's right. so that's right. i'm hoping I'm, I'm hoping and i'm praying you know i'm not even praying no more because you know when you pray for it you leave it with him and he'll give it to you but mm -hmm. um you're very religious yeah, you yeah, mentioned yeah, God a lot. I'm very spiritual, man. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Feel like, like it's Sunday. You know when you, I do. It's I mean, this life I lived when I was here, um, it wasn't perfect, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I I know what it's like to be in a program. I know what it's like to, to 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 get a little bit of money. I ain't I ain't I ain't I was never no big timer, but I, I did my fair share. So I know what that's like. And then look over my life. I've been to the desert twice and been to port of prince once you know um to 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 look over my life and, and see that i'm still here i'm, I'm grateful mm -hmm. you know what i mean and, and mm -hmm. that's understandable this dude it mm -hmm. makes it even greater mm -hmm. what how how can people see this and when when does it take place um the first uh debut for the play is going to be at center stage um baltimore nice venue. center stage very um, historic theater, very, very nice theater. Um, they have um, a great theater as far as uh, the intimacy, you know, for, for a one-person piece. And then we're going to take it around to some other theaters. we got arena players on board, 
Uh, we're trying to pull some other theaters in. Uh, I'm not going to mention no other names until they make the commitment, but mm-hmm. some other theaters in Baltimore are uh, looking at us. But but the debut is going to be at um, Center Stage Baltimore on November the 12th, oh, okay. which is uh, Veterans Day. And uh, Curtis kind of uh, just, just alluded to the fact that he's a military guy. Uh, I, too, am uh, a Marine uh, a veteran. So uh, I thought it was important to do this on Veterans Day because, mm-hmm. um, you know, we can pull in, you know, that aspect. You know what I mean? Um, that's another connection that we have. Uh, we both are veterans. Right. So, um, yeah, it's November the 12th, Center Stage. Um, that's where you can see it. You can go to our Center Stage uh, website and buy tickets online. Or you can go to the center stage box office directly. People have been calling me and hit me and texting me. I do not have tickets. <laughs> Everything is online or uh, at the box office. That's good. That's good. So we're going to have to check it out. That's very and, good. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping y'all come through. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're evenings. trying to sell this thing out, man. I'm trying to uh, kind of uh, prove a point, you know what I mean, uh, get my name out there. Um, I've been doing this on my own. Same with the book, pushing it getting this story out there. It's not just about me trying to be a writer, trying to be, trying to be a playwright. Uh, Flubber's story is very impactful. It's, a, it's, a, it's bigger than just me. You know, people need to hear the story. It's a story about redemption. Hopefully, um, like I say, even with the book, uh, taking it to the stage, people uh, will see the story and hopefully it'll change that life. life. I told people, I challenged people on my page, on my social media, if you know somebody in your life that's going through a struggle and you planning on buying a ticket for yourself, buy a ticket for that person and bring them to the play. Because mm-hmm. I guarantee you, um, it'll change their life. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to give it to you. I, listen, I, listen, I'm going to call it like it is. I'm going to give it to you because, I mean, um, hearing the stories, yeah. man, he gave it to us. Like, it's, it's a bunch of cats in this city that's clean right now because of this dude right here. Like, you know, and they was they was clean and then they fell off the wagon and you know, when everybody turned their back, you know what I mean, on them, he was the one that said, Nah, look I nah. Okay, we all, you know, we all gonna fall short, you know what I mean? We all I'm just I'm one bag I'm one bag of dope away from being you know, from getting high again. So mm-hmm. nah, I, I got you. I'm a it's kept me I heard some stories, man. I, we wind up at a um at, we wound up at a rehearsal, and at the rehearsal, they was having a, a NA, an NA meeting, an yep. NA meeting, like, and it was like a big, a big celebration where they had somebody coming in from out of town. Well, Corey tells one of the guys, he, he tell one of the guys, he say, um, the guy say, um, hey man, um, um, how did you wrote a book about your brother, blah blah blah, and Corey said, yeah, you know, we changed it to a play, we great performing. He said, wow, he said, yeah, he said, yeah, the guy that played him, he's standing right there. Mm-hmm. So I'm ordering, I'm getting some food, you know, I'm I'm trying to be humble, mm-hmm. and then I get a taste of my own humble pie, because the dude walk over, he like, hey, man, you um, you playing flubber, man? And I say, um, I say, yeah, man, I, I say, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to do the best I can. He just looked at me, man, he paused for a minute, he say, um, yo, flubber was a real dude, man. And he walked off. He didn't say no more to yeah. me. He just looked yeah. at me and said, yo, yeah. he was a real dude. So then they started, a few guys started telling me stories about the things that he did just to help them, you know, get clean, stay clean, mm. or come back to being clean. And I'm, I'm just sitting there like, wow, like, this city owes this dude a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. the city owes this dude a lot. You know what I mean? Um, the programs oldest dude a lot well you know i i've always said that uh, uh contrary to what you said about your life i've always said that everybody everybody life can be an academy award winning movie you know what i mean uh everybody got a story to tell yeah that's one of my mm-hmm. mantras everybody has a story everybody to tell. got a story yeah. man you know and, one of uh, my homeboys just, just don't tell it well though that, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some people scared to tell it, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Y'all was talking about y'all was talking about that 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 our illustrious dummy earlier. Like <laughs> he got a story he's scared to talk about, man. He's scared to death. But we ain't gonna go there about him because we don't want him to get no time over this great man that we talking about. But he got a story to tell that he's scared to tell. He, he mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah. um I got a homeboy, um, Troy hit me and said me. So I, I gotta get up with him. 
What up, Troy? T T Melton. What's come going through. on? All come my family. Through. You know what I mean? Come through and all, all my my my, my Woodborn family, all my East Baltimore family, West Baltimore family, South Baltimore family, North Baltimore family, South Carolina family. Mm -hmm. I know y'all gonna be in the house. Um, y'all come through and check it out November twelfth at the center stage here in Baltimore. That's right. Listen, I'm gonna say this, y'all. I ain't gonna say no more. Just like I said for the movie premiere, it used to be a time they wouldn't let us down there unless we was cleaning the houses, man. Mm -hmm. So now you got a dude from Lafayette and Castle Street who had a fourth grade education who came from nothing. And y'all know the gut I came from. Now we great being center stage. So if I'm there, that means y'all there. Come, enjoy it. We're going to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all done got me fired up. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> fired up. So y'all got to be go. in the house, what, November the 12th? All yeah, right, all there. right. Yeah, we're going to check it out, November 12th. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Uh, thank y'all for coming through. Thank um, you, man. Thank you for having us. How can, uh, how can people stay in touch with you? Uh, we both on uh, most social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, J-A-Y Johnson. I'm on IG. Corey J A Y three one, holler at your boy. Holler at your boy. Wow, um, <laughs> wow. You know what? Thanks, because you just gave me a platform to do this. I ain't never had to do this before, so that's all new to me. All right, so I'm on Facebook, right? I'm still old school, man. I like a phone call. It's all good. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Curtis McNeil. You can look me up on Facebook, Baltimore City, Maryland. You'll see a picture of a dude walking through the city. He bigger than the city, but anyway, um. You can go there, or you can go to my Instagram, and that's like, what is it? Curtis, Curtis McNeil 12. Is it Curtis McNeil 12? Something like that. Yeah, it's like Curtis McNeil 12. <laughs> Hit me on Instagram. You know, you can send me pictures, whatever, whatever. Don't ask me to send you no pictures, because I don't know how to do it yet on Instagram. But um, uh, uh, I think that's the... Oh, oh, you can go to www.cntfilms.com, and you can see... Uh, my first, my directorial debut in film, Thick as Thieves. Um, it's hot. I'm pretty sure if you're from Baltimore City, if you're from Detroit, if you're from Chicago, if you're from L.A., if you're from California, if you're from Atlanta, New York, Philadelphia, basically all the places that's got inner city hoods. Yeah, all the places where black people live. Yeah, all the places <laughs> where black folk live at. You will find yourself in this film. Yeah. You will find yourself in this film. It's called Thick as Steve. So Thick you can Steve. also catch me at www.cntfilms.com. All right. All, all right. right. So all right. we'll be back next week. It's going to be election day. Um, That's right. Uh, so we're going to be having election coverage. Uh, I'm feeling good. We'll hey. see how it goes. Yeah, brother. Oh, hey. Please vote. Be here. I'm yep. grateful. Get out definitely. the vote. Rock the vote. vote. Rock the Please vote. Definitely. Vote. Please Thanks vote. again, fellas. And Thank you. Um, we'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Okay. All right. That's good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, we're going to come check it out.